Good morning everyone, here from Itosha National Park in Namibia. We arrived here two days ago from Swakopmund, where we were staying previously. I think it took around six hours to drive here, quite a long drive. And this is the best place for safaris in Namibia, and also one of the best places for safaris in the entire world. Right now we're staying at a camp called Okao Kueju. We're actually staying at a hotel room. We were supposed to be camping, but I've been really sick. I mentioned in the last video that I could feel like some sort of illness coming on. And then after we filmed that video, I got really sick. It started off with like a sore throat and then a really bad headache and then earache. And then all my body started hurting, the joints, the muscles. And then I got really fatigued, tired, and then also dizzy. And I've had like fever symptoms, so sometimes I feel really hot. And even when it's not that cold, I start like shivering. And I don't know what I got. I don't know if it was transmitted by a human or if it's something like a mosquito passed on to me. No idea. But Carol's okay so far. She has had a bit of a sore throat though. And even now I'm still not feeling good, but this is an easier video to film because it's a safari, so mainly just going to be sat in the car. A lot of the places you're not even allowed to get out of the car, so yeah, I think it's doable. So the camping areas were $45 for the both of us. It was basically just a parking lot though, and there was no shelter. So the reason that we stayed here is because there was no shelter. It would be way too hot in the blazing sun in the Namibian summer. But this is kind of a bad deal. It's $190 a night, and yeah, pretty basic hotel really. Don't even have Wi-Fi here or anything. They do have Wi-Fi in the complex though, but it's more near the central areas, like the office. And even the AC doesn't completely cool down like it says. Like you can put 18 degrees or something, but it doesn't go that low. And they also have some issues with the water pressure. But one of the cool things about this camp is we have one of the best water holes in the entire national park to see animals. And it's just like a one, two minute walk from where we're staying, just around here. Yeah, you gotta be quiet, right? That's what they say. And now we can finally put Carol's new sniper lens to test. This is what we bought it for. So we should be able to really zoom in on the animals. I can actually see some zebras coming. They're very far away. Yeah, I can't see them with my eyes. So that's another thing. We also bought these from Decathlon, some yeah. binoculars. Yeah, I think it was like 30 euros. I think it zooms in more than the camera lens. Yeah. And this water hole is also awesome because you're able to be outside because they have this protective fence with wires so the animals can't come. Ah, a giraffe. A giraffe? A giraffe is coming. Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. in the breakfast buffet now which is included in the price I forgot to mention that I don't have much of a appetite since I'm sick so just two toasts for me and a coffee that's been giving me a bit of a boost at least every day and Carol went for the, the omelette yeah cheese omelette there is not um, like many options but the omelette is good yeah I think they had like bacon sausages and cereals so it's not too bad either So 
going to visit some other water holes now outside of our campsite and you can do guided game drives here where you book like a tour with another group of people and I think how much was it? Uh, 50 USD per person uh, our initial plan was to do it but since we are spending a lot with the accommodation we decided not to do it and also Chris is not feeling well so we're not gonna do it we're gonna do like the self-drive one which is this now and I am the guide, the guide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't think some random group needs sick Chris right next to them so yeah it's not a good idea I think this is one of the few places where you can actually do it by yourself yeah like uh, there are some rules uh, like you cannot go uh, faster than 60 kilometers per hour and also you cannot leave your car yeah so I imagine it's not too dangerous if they they give you that option but we'll see we're actually going to a part now that we hope has uh, lions it's supposed to be lions there sometimes Even on our way to the water hole, we're already seeing so many incredible animals. Like look here, just a, a giraffe, two of them. So, so close. Wow. I don't think I've ever even seen a giraffe in the wild before. In the wild I haven't. Just in the zoo when I was younger. <laughs> So we've arrived at the waterhole, it's called Okondeka. Not seeing the lion family here right now. This is the part that you don't want to get out of the car. Oh, definitely not. Especially because you don't see the lions. So maybe they are around here, but we don't see them. And that's actually the scary part for me, uh, knowing that there are lions and what's the other animal, the hog? Yeah, the warthog, yeah, rhino. That, that one is very dangerous. And rhino too. Uh, I think uh, I saw a video of a, a rhino attacking a car here in this park. I, I think many years ago. And that's kind of scary. But uh, I think that's not uh, normal. So even if you get something like a flat tire here, you're not allowed to get out of the car. You're just going to have to drive back with the flat tire. If your car completely breaks down, I'm not even sure what you're supposed to do. Probably have to call the center there and they bring someone to pick you up. But I imagine they'll have to get out of the car or something, right? Not sure how that works. So we're going back to the water hole at our camp, but this time at sunset time. It says online that it's almost guaranteed to see the black rhino here, which is actually endangered. But apparently at night or around this time, sunset time, the rhino or rhinos come 
almost every day so hoping to see that all right so we're in luck the moment that we arrive the black rhino is already here our first time ever seeing a rhino in person So it is the next morning and we're changing camps today. We're going to one called Halali. That's about an hour and 20 minutes away. So it's not super close. And unfortunately I still feel uh, really terrible. I really don't know what I've got. I feel really bad. So I think we're not gonna camp there again. I think we'll just upgrade and pay extra to have a comfortable room. Cause yeah, I think it will be a torture having to sleep in the, in the tent, unfortunately. We've come to a viewpoint now of the Etosha pan, what they call it, a giant salt pan. There's even a little pool here, but I don't think that's drinking water. Looks kind of salty. Got a bunch of oryx here. So this salt pan is so big that apparently you can see it from space. And I remember when we were looking at this place on Google Maps, we saw this massive white area, which I can show you now. And we were wondering what the hell it was, and that's it. Just a massive salt pen. I don't think any animals really go on there. Not sure though. I actually read that when it's raining a lot and there's water, a bit of water on top of the salt, uh, that sometimes there are fl flamingos go there. So yeah, there are some animals that <laughs> go there sometimes. Yeah, I didn't even know there was flamingos around here. I wonder if it turns into like a mirror. I know there's some other places that when it rains on the salt, yeah, Looks like, like the a one, mirror. The, the one in Bolivia. Oh, uni. Yeah. yeah. So we just stopped here. Uh, we saw some cars parked, so we imagined that there was something. And there are actually many giraffes and zebras together. Grace is trying to get some shots close. Yeah, I think this is the most we've seen. Yeah. Giraffes. So this is today's accommodation. It was pretty easy to upgrade. So it's $135 a night. Quite a bit cheaper than the other one. It's also quite nice too. I think it's slightly smaller than the other one. The other one also had like a kitchen area, although it didn't have anything to cook with, but we could take our like gas canister in there. This one has a much bigger bathroom though. Really nice big bathroom. And it's two single beds. Kind of similar style to the other one actually, with this. And we got the mini fridge and kettle. And I think here they just provided some teas and coffees. Nice picture of the zebras. I think we literally saw how many zebras right now? More than 200 probably. There were so many and they were like everywhere. From maybe the middle of the, the way from the other place that we were until here. 
and we could actually see the like a bit of change in the animals because in the other place we saw many spring box like all the time and here it was more uh, zebras and also many giraffes as well it was really cool but you probably noticed that the drive here everything was super green it was pretty dry around the other campsite so maybe that's why and then over there is the camping area which is where we were supposed to stay I think it's also around $45 a night but once again there's like no shelter or anything so you're just exposed under the sun the whole time I don't actually see anyone there at all right now so just like the previous campsite this one also has a waterhole within walking distance from the campsite it's called Moringa Waterhole and on the map it showed an image of elephants so I guess you can see elephants there sometimes we'll probably do what we did at the other one we're going now during the day and then we go around sunset time and then tomorrow we go again at sunrise usually different animals at different times so it's what I was talking about before how it's all nice and green around here completely different colorful flowers too yellow ones So it's our final day now. We did end up visiting three times the waterhole near our camp, but two of the times there was absolutely no animals whatsoever, and then another time there was just a few zebra, so that one wasn't so good compared to the other camp where we'd always see many animals. And today we're going on a drive once again to another camp. We're not going to be staying there, but we'll be visiting. And we stopped at another waterhole now. I think it's called Goas, some other kind of antelope. That's not the springbok. Seems to be coming towards us. Usually they don't come towards us. And you probably saw from the footage that we saw more rhinos. So first we saw one in the distance on its own, which was a white rhino. And then later on we were driving and we turned the corner and we were just like head on with a rhino. And it was with a little kid so we actually got worried because we were so close. And uh, yeah, we thought that it might like charge at us, being protective, right? But it just kind of stared at us for a while and then went into the bush. And that was a black rhino, the endangered one. Carol knows the difference between the white one and the black one. Because they're both kind of grey, actually. Yeah, they have pretty much the same color. But I think what uh, is different between them is the, the head and the mouth. Uh, I think the head of the black rhino, the, the forehead is very small and also the the mouth is different uh, I, I don't know how to explain really well but uh, when I searched online you can see the the different heads the the black rhino has a smaller head and the white one has a bigger head and also the forehead is different so the season that we're in right now which is the summer monsoon season is considered to be the worst time to come here to see the big animals especially the the top five the big five so they say that it's better to come in the dry months which i think is around may to october and mainly that's because since it is raining 
there will be water sources throughout the park right so the animals will be more spread out whereas in the dry season the animals all have to come to the same water holes that you can visit and yeah you'll obviously see all the animals there so i think during may to october it's way more common to see like elephants i don't even think we're going to be able to see the elephants and the lions stuff like that we'll see right we're going to be filming today maybe we'll get lucky yeah i think uh, it's like for us it's amazing already so i think i would still come at this time but if you want to make sure that you're going to see everything, especially elephants and stuff, you should come during the other season, the, the high season. But that's also a lot more expensive and I think even hard to find accommodations. So you have to pre-book pretty much everything. So yeah, it just depends what you want and how much money you can spend here. We also saw another cool antelope around here, which is called Kudu which is really cool. It's pretty big and it has the big spirally horns. Probably the coolest horns that we've seen in the, the park so far. So we saw that yesterday at this waterhole and then we just saw, saw it now on the way here again. So pretty cool. Right now we saw about four of them all together, really close. So this campsite is Namutoni and the bizarre thing about this one is there is a fort here. So I mentioned in the previous video that Namibia was colonized by the Germans. So the Germans built this fort in 1894 I believe. It has been restored multiple times though and they even held English prisoners of war here. All the way out here which is bizarre in this land that has like elephants lions things like that really didn't expect to find a fort here I'm not sure if that's German I think maybe it is looks like there's nothing open inside though here it says there'd be a restaurant a shop everything closed I also read that at one point one of the indigenous groups in the area rebelled against the Germans and they destroyed the fort so it was rebuilt in 1904, around that time. We didn't really see that many animals on the way here in about an hour and 30 minutes. Not many at all compared to the previous places. And this campsite seems pretty much empty. Barely see anyone here at all staying here. Also, there was no diesel on the here in the filling station. In the gas station. Yeah, the gas station. So I, I think we can make it to, back to the other camp and hopefully they will have diesel over there but just keep in mind that this can happen when you're here
So this is gonna be the end of the video now. We ended up staying outside the park because we're gonna make our way back to Vinduk where we're gonna get the flight out of Namibia and head to South Africa just below from here. So we stayed at this place called Itosha Trading Post Campsite and this time we decided to do the camping again on top of the truck for the last time and this was just $25 a night it's kind of a shame that they don't have this inside the park the government ones inside the park like we said it's just a parking lot like this area you don't you don't get the option to have this kind of thing so it's similar to what we had in Sossusley where we have like the kitchen area here also got the power outlets and then inside a big bathroom I like the inside of this one more than the one in uh, Sossusley and then this also has hot water so pretty good especially for $25 like I said the one in the park is $45 and you get nothing pretty much and we think that we may have seen a lion yesterday yeah so like during the entire safari thing in the inside the park we were like so excited to see the lions and we didn't see any we tried until the last minute and didn't see any inside but then when it came here last night we were just sitting and having dinner and then we heard something uh, like two times or maybe three times yeah raw yeah like a lion was, raw it was definitely an, a lion and then when we were looking uh, we were looking at this part here uh, we saw something like kind of yellow and like big I tried to take pictures but it was getting dark so I couldn't focus it was so no pictures of it and I think it was a lion and we got very scared yeah, it went away really quick as well, so we didn't really have time to get the, the good camera out. It was just right here, right after the raw. There is a fence here, by the way. Kind of a similar kind of fence that we saw at those water holes. So it's been a really awesome place to visit. If you watch the three videos, all three of them were very unique for us. Even though we've traveled many places in the world, we haven't really seen any places like this in Namibia. Just a shame that the second half of the trip, I've been feeling bad. Even now I'm getting better, but I'm still not 100%. We're actually thinking that I might have COVID because this is exactly identical to how it was last year, exactly a year ago. And right now I have a bit of like uh, ear infection, feeling a bit dizzy because of the ear infection. And that's exactly what happened last time. So I think we're going to get a COVID test on the way back and just see. And as I mentioned, the next videos will be from South Africa, specifically Cape Town in South Africa. So. Yeah, hopefully I'm good for those videos and that's what's coming up next.